Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Joe Rell Whitfield. I am the co-host and co-founder of I Am Perspective, and this is my co-host, co-founder. Nasi Alam. And this is I Am Perspective Radio. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Man, we are so excited to be here at WEMS Radio. Uh, we're, this is our first first time being up in here even though this is going to be our second episode it's going to it's going to work out well uh this is our first thing into the new year we have been doing dialogue series i say we nasi and i joe Rell, nasi and i we've been doing dialogue series around new york and the country now because we're going into other cities uh for the past three years now um, and we're really looking to dig into perspective of people and gain empathy through these conversations. So we started off with a few conversations with Nasi and myself, and that went on to, well, how does it look to get people in a room? And we went on and did that, and we started off with maybe six or seven people, and then we had a room full of about 50 people, full of about. <laughs> and um, we've covered topics from mental health to a uh, black woman's perspective to the LGBTQ perspective, we've had panels all over the city, and now we are finally here at WEMS Radio for our very first radio station. I'm excited. We have a very special guest with us that we're going to introduce in a second, and um, yeah, man, Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year, Nasi. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. <laughs> how does it feel? How does it feel? I know, because you want to jump right into I it, do want to jump I want right to know from you, how does it feel to be here at the radio, have a radio station? It's an amazing feeling. Um, I think we've been speaking about per other people's perspective for a very long time, and this is an opportunity for us to share our own perspectives as we hear from our special guests, which we have a very special guest with us tonight. His name is Leo Para. Leo! Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to have all types of sound effects and applause soon, trust. <laughs> right um, now, you get the, the yeah, table yeah. Yeah, 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 The table tap, the table tap. So Leo is a very special guest for us because aside from Jarrell and I, the only other person that has facilitated an I Am Perspective conversation has been Leo. So he has had the opportunity to join us for a few different events. We had the Hispanic Perspective event, um, Love and Perspective, and was it Freedom? Freedom. Freedom Perspective as well, right? So he has an inside understanding of the work that it is that we do, and so we wanted to invite him out to first find out what, what it is that he's doing, and also uh, we thought he would be the perfect person to interview us, mm. right? We, like we said, we've been sharing, we've been listening to other people's perspectives, but it's an opportunity for everyone to find out why we are doing this in the first place and what our perspectives are. So, Leo, if you just want to introduce yourself really quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, first and foremost, um, thank you for the honor and the privilege. I mean, I know we've We've been traveling together for for a little time now, and it's just really uh, it, it makes me really happy to see you guys, uh, you know, continuing to expand the brand and um, you know really uh, reaching out to more and more people uh, because this work is very necessary. So um, yeah, thank you for having me. Thank yeah, you for having me absolutely. on the first episode. Um, yeah, so my name is uh, uh, Leonardo Parra. I, I am a uh, I'm a shaman and a healer. Um, I go by the name of the One-Eyed Shaman. I am the creator of Mask Off, uh, the Sacred Masculine uh, Discussion Series. Uh, it's a men's forum for men. Uh, uh, it's for men, all about men, and uh, you know we're really uh, having a conversation around masculinity, what, uh, what it looks like uh, from the perspective of ancient traditional wisdom, um, the idea that masculinity is a technology that has been used to build uh, community and nation states and at a time now where um, we're My seeing brother, so did you much just say masculinity was a technology a technology <laughs> absolutely That's absolutely phenomenal. yeah and uh, we get we get to we get to figure out how to upgrade our technology at, right. at this particular moment when um, there seems to be so much chaos I think there's an opportunity for us to reinvent um, you know what masculinity looks like so um, yeah, we're Absolutely. jumping in, rolling up our sleeves, and having these conversations with a lot of our brothers and creating uh, the sacred spaces to do so. Thank you. Great. Yeah, I think um, as you are sharing your perspective around masculinity, like Jarrell just mentioned, that you see it as technology, right? Um, what 
do you believe is the power of perspective? Since that's what we're discussing here tonight. Yeah, so I think, yeah, no, I think, I think interestingly enough, as we're talking about technology, um, you know, technology has been around with man since, you know, the inception of time as we know it. Um, uh, And even, even thinking is a technology. And so I think when you give somebody the opportunity to then um, create even more awareness through perspective, you know, the ability to really bend the mind into very small spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you give people an opportunity to really unlock worlds that they've never been a part of before. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we, we, we have a gift and a treasure because we live in New York City, right? right. And yes. so we have so many people that we get to share time and space, space with from so many different places, mm-hmm. um, all in just this one city. Like, you could literally you know, um, travel to a different part of the world just by taking a train ride somewhere in New York City. Right. And right. Um, it's one of the few places where we can... AKA the Bronx. Right, 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 right. And so there's a, you know, I think, I think for me it's a, it's a, it's a gem to, to be able to do this work uh, amongst our peers because, you know, I feel like it, 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 it gets out to the rest of the world. And so, um, you know, there's a reason why everybody keeps coming to New York City. Yeah. You know? yeah. and so and we got perspective. Exactly, yeah. especially here. Yeah. Well, we, we've learned that perspective is everywhere. It goes in every form. Uh, you just said something wonderful, uh, the, the words unlock new worlds, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. when we think about perspective, uh, if I were to break it down on a radio, right, or if I'm sitting across from, right, I'm sitting across from you here, right. and we're both viewing this room, completely differently and you're staring at me so you can't see the big screen behind you if there was a movie on right now you would have no idea what the movie is right and i think when we introduce perspective you know you get to show me what's behind me or or your vision of how you see things and vice versa and we get to unlock new worlds like that you know that's that's wonderful um, and you know, and just just to add to that, I think it's one of the one of the reasons why I gravitated towards your work so so very early on when um, I first was introduced to it, uh, because I think um, the opportunity to get people into a space to have conversation serves a dual purpose. Um, it's not just the opportunity to get people perspective, but it's also the opportunity to allow people to have their own say about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and oftentimes we don't have the places to be able to come together to do that and you guys have done such a masterful job. Yeah, um, so yeah, it's yeah. A, yeah. Thank you. We appreciate that. We do. And we take all gratitudes and big ups. Yeah. You can send well them deserved. an email, well text, deserved. cash yeah. app. We'll post a testimonial on our Facebook yeah. page. No, no we love website. that. We love that. Mm-hmm. Especially uh, we'll, we'll continue to tell our story evolve throughout these episodes and, and things, but a lot of times you hear people creating something from nothing. Oh, it was an idea. It was a thought. You know, mm-hmm. I know we had this conversation many times, so for, to, to see the conversation that we had, this idea, then go to events, then go to testimonials, right. you know, that, like, that's amazing. So yeah. we, we truly receive that. Thank you. So the first question that I have for you, Leo, before you start asking us questions, is as someone who has been to a multiple number of events, what is one thing that personally stood out to you, a new perspective that you were able to learn because you attended one of our events that you may not have had before? Hmm. Um, um, so is it, you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, no, that's 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 it's, it's a good question because I this think I do. think mm-hmm. yeah I think I think of all the you know I've, of course I've been to so many of your events and have had the privilege of hosting mm-hmm. and I feel like at every one of them I learn something new uh, about about people the way people see things and more importantly about how I see myself seeing people see things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and so I, right yeah and, and so for me it's 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 always a point of of growth even um, even if it may even if from our perspective because we do a lot of the work there might be some conversations that sound familiar right. uh, being able to experience them from people who have a different texture a different look mm-hmm. uh, you know um, I think is um, is always a, a, a pleasure for me but I think um, more specific because it speaks to the work that I do having attended uh, the 
was it the mas- masculinity event that you hosted uh, that I was in the audience and um, just just um, I, th- I think it just speaks to the to the time that we're in um, in terms of like how heightened the tensions are between just everybody like if you were to put two people together that may have nothing to do with each other mm-hmm. there would still be some level of tension because it, it, it's even showing up inside of male female relationships in open spaces where like people have nothing to do with each other Mm -hmm. it's like literally inside of the first five minute intro and the shit was already heated i was like (laughs) wow this is amazing um and so it was uh yeah it was it was uh it was it was really good to see the passion but also the opportunity to really um responsibly because i think that's the other thing that i enjoy so much about the work that you guys do is um, the the desire to be responsible about how you hold the space, um, how you curate the experience, and more importantly, how you um, uh, create the pacing for people to share, so they feel both seen, but that people also allow other people to you know uh, be in community. So, um, yeah, for me, it was really a, 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 an eye opener, and um, more specifically, I think there were a lot of um, female voices, not enough masculine voices in the room, and, uh, you know, I think it's not because men don't have something to say, I think there is a, a trepidation behind how is what I'm going to say going to be received, um, and so, yeah, so, uh, I think for me that was really one of, like, the most impactful things that, that I got to experience. Speaking of perspective, right, um, I didn't even realize that there were more women than men in the room because that was one of those events that we had where we had a significant amount of men that attended the event that has never been to any previous events, may not have attended any other events after the fact, but that they were very open to being at this event. Like they were, This was a very popular event and they wanted to be there and they had a perspective to share, right? So even the work that you're doing there's definitely a space for that, but that was my perspective of the night. I'm like, oh wow, okay, all these men, yeah. they want to talk. Okay, great, because usually it has been a majority of women yes. in our crowds. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I also think what we offer in those spaces is something different because we're coming from a place of perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember in that event, one of the perspective things that came up and we were like oh this is where it, when it matters and there was a dude in there and he started speaking <laughs> as you can remember <laughs> like, like i tell this for the world man and i hope you're listening bro you you helped us tremendously <laughs> because he was speaking um and he had a room full of women they were paying attention to every word they were looking at him and he he, he went into he definitely his had a captive audience <laughs> yeah <laughs> He, sure he started, he was passionate, he sure did. and he started talking about his friends who happened to be uh, black women, they were lawyers, successful, and they were having their issues with dealing with black men, right, and they were talking about going, maybe dating other races, and he took that really personal, and he went from they talking about the women he knew mm-hmm. to... And then women, he said, you know, and women do blah, 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 blah. And as soon as he switched, <laughs> he switched that one word or that one perspective from I'm talking from my view to now I'm talking about all women, he lost the whole room. Mm-hmm. And every, all the women were like, oh, hands went up immediately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and speaking of that, right, that's something we actually look to prevent at our events. Mm-hmm. Um, one of our ground rules actually is that no one speaks on behalf of a whole group of people. You don't represent your race, your religion, um, your social class. You can't speak on everyone. We believe that perspective is individual. Everyone has their own unique perspective, regardless of shared perspectives that we may have because of tied culture. Right. Right? And that was a great time to jump mm-hmm. in there and show that and mm-hmm. educate everyone of like, yeah. This is what this is about, and we, it wasn't to reprimand him, but to show like this is where the conversation gets lost, yeah. like man, and and to let him know as well, mm-hmm. like you had everybody listening, and then as soon as you said something that went outside of your experience, your perspective, now it became something to combat. Mm-hmm. Now instead of people listening to you on your ally side, now they want to be like, oh no, not me, I gotta take offense to this. Yeah. You know? and I think I think uh, what 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 makes the space so conducive to that is that you create the space almost as if like 
I almost equate it to people traveling to work in the morning in a single <laughs> occupancy vehicle, right? <laughs> Where like, you know, you could pick your nose, you could curse if you want, you can like listen to your music full blast. Yeah. Nobody's impacted by it. Um, and you also, um, you, you only have a perspective of the world from the confines of the inside of the vehicle. Um, and it's not until you step out that you actually see what you're creating. And so um, you guys create a space for people to ride for whatever amount of time, um, you know, uh, during your talks, uh, that people actually have other people in the vehicle to be with. Yeah. And um, we all know how difficult a long uh, car ride can right, be right. when people... When people aren't necessarily, um, you know, respectful of space. Yeah. And um, I think it's a great opportunity for people to actually see that in closed combat because we've become so isolated, right, right, um, right. you know, and so in closed spaces like that, I think uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's invaluable in so many ways. The internet has become like a thousand foot barrier. For yeah. people. Right. They're like, oh, I can be talking to you right here and, and say something about you. Uh, you know, the safety of your screen yeah. right. and act like I can't just reach out and smack the shit out of you, you know? <laughs> I mean listen these days we're not just contending with 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 uh, with walls at the border but we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're with these imaginary walls right, right. Um, that, that that we've been putting up with inside of um, you know a, a Western dominant culture for mm -hmm. a long time that looks to pit people against each other in a variety of different ways you know it we welcome the diversity but in many ways it also becomes the tool for proxy uh, warfare against the very people that supposedly we we allow in. And what, it's a, and yeah, it's what's a missing really in society is genuine human connection. Yeah. And so as we yeah. are hosting these events, we're looking to bring people together face to face because it's a very different experience when you're sitting across from someone and having a conversation versus on the computer. Like how much can you really get to know someone online versus Okay, I'm sitting across from you, I see the pain in your eye, I see the emotion behind what it is that you're saying, so now I can take whatever it is you have to say in a much different way. I'm yeah. present. Really? I've saying. heard that a lot, but I've never heard you say that, or, or, or that, but like the pain in someone's eyes. Mm -hmm. Like That's a thing, to sit there and, okay, I felt some kind of way about, it, or I felt some kind of way about your people, whatever mm -hmm. that means. But then I'm sitting here and you're talking about your personal experience and I can actually watch your emotions and everything that it changes, <laughs> it changes creates everything. empathy right which is what we're looking to create at the yeah. end of the day is empathy through understanding um empathy is not just a it's not words right it's a feeling thing like what am i feeling in this moment right now and i can see like you know one of the examples i think that we've used is like anyone who gets cut is going to cry or is going to feel yeah. the pain regardless of what your background is to be able to see that it's a different experience it's like oh yeah sure they're in pain whatever but Right, cool, yeah. man. So, Leo, we're going to turn it over to you. This is the first <laughs> time we've really relinquished this to just the jump power. into yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 No, right. Leo, man, I, on air, I want to say thank you, man. You're a special guy, and you're going to do amazing things with everything you're working on. We went through a, um, a lot of consideration of who we would share space with, you know, to host, and your energy is amazing. So, it's only right that, you know, <laughs> we do this on the radio. Yeah. Jump into this. Yes, yes, yes. No, so, thank so you so you much. Off, thank you. Well, thank you for that. I um, that that means the world to me. I um, you know, I don't, I don't think it's any coincidence. Uh, we're we're living in in the time of alignment, mm -hmm. and um, you know, somehow you guys ended up in my life at the right time. Uh, you know, we've both created a great creative partnership, but also. Uh, you know, I think we've deepened our bonds inside of friendship, um, and you know, it, it's it's going to take I think this kind of collaboration to both inform people and also hold the stake in the ground to create the kind of changes that we want to see. And so, you know, I'm really uh, it's a privilege. You know, it's just, it's a privilege, and every time that I get to be with you guys, it's um, you know, I, I'm reminded of that. So, um, yeah. So I I, I think. Everybody would want to know what would have been the impetus for you guys starting this, right? Um, just from just from the from jump, mm -hmm. uh, what would have um, wanted you guys to? Because we know these days that with all of the disruption, the distraction of the internet, with all of the voices, mm -hmm. with the very busy lives that we lead, 
um, to build a brand would have to mean a great commitment. It would mean to have to be in a lot of different places, a lot of uh, different times uh, to both create brand awareness, but also to be able to impact the kind of communities you're trying to bring this conversation to. So what would have wanted, like, what would have been the impetus for you guys to take on such a big commitment? I'm going to go first. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, I don't know. We never thought about this. <laughs> so, I'll go. Uh, so, Jerrell and I have been friends for 20 years at this point. And oddly enough, we actually met on the internet, mm. which is you know, <laughs> <laughs> the irony of all things. Right. Um, the old, dusty internet. Right, the the ba- back in the day. Communication. But... One of the things, so right now, for those of you who can't see, um, we have three very different people sitting in this room right now. I am a 5'2", Bengali, Muslim, yeah. <laughs> American-born, confused AC. Um, Jarrell you can, is a black man, six-something, really tall. Six-something, <laughs> really tall. <laughs> um, Leo is Colombian, a shaman, right? So we all have different backgrounds. But one of the things that we actually had in common is that realizing that people are more connected than they're not. So we used to have a lot of different conversations about Black Lives Matters, um, Muslims, and what the responsibility is for the other to partake in the other other revolution, right? Like, what does it actually look like to come together and recognize that no fight is just one person's fight, right? Like, as long as... Um, one person is not experiencing freedom, we're all not experiencing freedom. And so having all these conversations, at some point we got to point like, all right, well, we got it. <laughs> we're, we've been having these conversations. Now what? Like, how do we bring these conversations um, and this information to other people? For me specifically, there's this one story, um, speaking to a family member of mine, I remember asking them at that time, like, what do you think our role is in the Black Lives Matters movement. And her answer at that moment was to say that she has her own things going on and while she does feel and she does believe that obviously Black Lives Matters, she doesn't realize, she doesn't think that she has a role in it necessarily, right? And I was like, okay, um, but what if they come for us? Whose role is it then to protect us? And she was just like, oh, I want everybody to protect them. I'm like, yeah, like that's, everybody wants everybody to protect them, right? So fast forward a few months. This is like the end of 2016, I think. Um, you know, now there's a whole Muslim backlash happening at that time. And there was a lot of backlash. And now the same person, I'm talking to them, they're like, oh, shit. Right, like now it's affecting me and my community. Like, how does that look? And I was like, yeah, this is the same conversation that we had a few months ago. And now she has a different perspective because this is something that affects her. So that was one thing. Um, the other thing that really made a difference for me, you were speaking earlier about how we speak and what we can say. So I was part of a panel, a non-politically correct panel, where we were able to say whatever it is that we wanted. It was all women's events, and I was sitting on a panel with a city councilwoman, very like notable women who, in their everyday lives and their careers, are not able to say the words that they really wish they could say. Mm. Right? Like as a politician, you have to kind of limit yourself and the things that you're allowed to say right. because you're trying to, you know, votes right at the end of the day. And her leaving that event was such a you could see in her face how empowered and how liberated she felt being able to say the actual words, authentic words that were meaningful to her, her own perspective. And so that was a big inspiration for me to continue doing this kind of work. Um, yeah, really what Nussie said, um, to cap on Black Lives Matter is probably where it started for me. I'm a black American, been black all my life. And I started asking, why is this a black issue? You know, Black Lives Matter <clears throat> was a series of protests about police um, brutality, interaction with police and citizens. Like, they, there were specific incidents. So it was really confusing to me. Like, people were treating it like it was this uh, black pride thing. And I'm like, no, this is the police. The police fuck with everybody. 
<laughs> so I got into this understanding and the conversations we were having of like, okay, yeah, it's one thing to, to have perspective, but it's another thing to offer perspective. And what I think what I recognize was that no, if the people weren't, or, or like Nussie's cousin or family or whoever, and that's no shot at her family because we have a lot of family like that. I have black people that I know who are like that. I'm like, man, that's not, you know, we're good. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's not to single anybody out, but it's what would make someone care outside of just like, uh, I, one day I woke up and be like, man, that's really fucked up. I care now, you know? Um, what we recognize, what I recognize is that it's really offering perspective. How's your experience here? How are you, how's your experience with the police? You know, okay, pretty good. Boom, let me know about it. Let me tell you, maybe that will then give you a space to hear my perspective as opposed to like, hey, this is how it is. It's fucked up. You should care because I would love for that to be that case, but that's just not how it goes. Also, people don't listen in anger. When you come in and you already right, have like right. fighting words, like, all right, I want to hear this. Right. Yeah, and yeah. so I think that's something, another um, thing that we've looked to create is to create we're not looking to create debates. At the end of the day, we're not doing a back and forth, you're right, I'm right, no. I'm gonna share how I feel, these are my, my perspective based on my own facts or opinions or knowledge or whatever it is. You can take it, you can take a little bit of it, you can take all of it, you can take none of it, but I've gotten what I need to say out and the rest of it is on you, right, so. So, so, so to that end, um, mm -hmm. being that you guys now have I mean, you guys are veterans at this now. You, you've been doing it for quite some time. Um, first and foremost, you, you took on the endeavor at a time of heightened tension anyway in America. Right. In a in a diverse, rich town like New York where um, even what are the odds that in one of your first couple of engagements you wouldn't have run into some sort of of, you know, opposition mm -hmm. or a, a difficult conversation that maybe perhaps you wouldn't have been prepared for. Yeah. So just thinking back at all the experiences that you've had, um, what are the one or two experiences that you think have challenged you the most mm -hmm. and that you feel you've taken on the most growth from? I think all of them are challenging for me because mm -hmm. what I don't think a lot of people are seeing has to be done in the position that Nussie and I are in is like you really have to remove yourself you have to cur curate you have to be mm -hmm. the soft loving place you have to be the intimate you have to be able to do the pacing and flow and we create all of these topics we know what we want to talk about and then uh, or even I in perspective we knew what we wanted to start this from and as soon as we started it like it became way bigger than us. So I think the most challenging thing for me comes almost in every one we do, of me just shutting the F up <laughs> and not jumping in there with my opinion on everything. And it's a constant lesson for me of what we're trying to offer to people of a new way to listen. Um, there have been like specific incidences that have been challenging. There hasn't been anything that really has been, you know, people haven't argued and they got kind of testy in certain ones, but um, I, I think again that the biggest challenge is that every time I get up there to co consistently make a space, hear somebody say some crazy shit, and then be like, okay, <laughs> oh, okay that's <laughs> all right, that's your perspective. <laughs> I think for me, what's been I don't want to say challenging, but um, a different level of awareness from, and we've had this conversation as we're doing this perspective work, we're aware to different perspectives and more awareness in general, right? So I'm a woman and Jarrell is a man. And so the, the men's event that we had, right? That specific event and that testy gentleman that was there mm -hmm. who didn't want to listen to a woman, no. right? And so even acknowledging that, like there's gonna be spaces where for whatever reason, whatever, you know, previous issues that someone might have, I might not sometimes, maybe I'm not the one that someone wants to listen to, or like, I'm not a, I'm not a practicing Muslim woman, right? But I do have that background. And so 
there might be some people who want to come and tell them, like, I don't like Muslim terrorists, so I'm not going to listen to her. Same way I'm sure some people might look at you and, you know, prejudge you or whatever the case is, but just and, an and awareness. And vice versa. Mm -hmm. I experienced that mm -hmm. um, with Nuss, with women who are more uh, comfortable with talking with her, mm -hmm. just because that's what it is. Because, again, we're taking a lot of strangers. We're mm -hmm. taking a lot of people... Right. Off the street, <laughs> off the street. Like domestic violence, that was one. Like yeah, the yeah. domestic violence one. I sat in the back, you mm -hmm. know, and and Nussie captained that whole quarterback, that whole thing, and that was a better vibe for me to, you know, I'm, I'm sure I could have done it and been as soft and compassionate as possible, but you know, she was just a better presence for that. You know? yeah. mm. So 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 what do you what do you guys um what do you guys see next for for I am perspective? Like what's on the horizon? We have a lot of things planned. Um, what we started off with two years ago to three years ago is not like the potential has grown. Um, so this radio show we're on now, we'll be doing this every Tuesday. This affords us the opportunity to actually have more perspectives. You know, we can only host so many conversations, and not everyone is able to like. We're not able to get to all the topics right. that we always want to get to. Um, and that's a lot of man work. We got to get spots. We mm -hmm. have to promote. We have to footwork. You know, it's yeah. a lot. And we're going to continue to do it. But We're looking to get into education, to corporate, to do unconscious bias awareness trainings. Um, we are working on a compilation book as well because we do believe that perspective can be shared in many different ways, not just conversation, but also through different forms of art, whether that's writing. We've had events where we have performance arts um, where people can share their perspective that way as well. Uh, we have a lot on the horizon. Yeah, I, I foresee in the, the greatest sense, uh, I was telling Nussie this, mm -hmm. I foresee a room, and it, it was maybe a vision, a dream. It doesn't matter who the room is full of, but, but mm -hmm. what I saw was a room full of Chinese people, not even Chinese American, Chinese people mm -hmm. in, in a space doing Iron Perspective, led by a Chinese curator, man and woman, speaking in their language, mm. and then substitute that with everybody. Mm. A room full of Kenyan people, a room full of Ghana, a room full of Jews, and on and on. That's what I see next for us. Everything that Nussie just mentioned, which is what she just mentioned, is what we literally have lined up. Like We're working on that now. Um, but by the end of this year, I, I'd really like to see us expand we're working on uh, we're working on bringing people along properly because mm -hmm. because as you know like this is a lot of people think they could just jump in there it seems very simple mm -hmm. to to get in front of a room and do what we do but there's a lot to it so we want to mm -hmm. properly educate and, and workshop folks up so that perspective we can, mastery that's also coming up yeah yeah mm. and start really getting it's a catchy word too it's another thing that, <laughs> that, that, that we actually check I mean, you know, you bring you bring that up to somebody, and they'll they'll run with it. And if you have a conversation with them for five minutes, they're talking about perspective. You'll People hear it. People are not up, using like, this word two years ago. Yeah. Then you when they when it clicks, it's like yeah, you know, it's just another way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. It's not quite opinion, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, you know, opinion is very personal and and finite. You know, this is what this thing is because I believe it so. Mm -hmm. You know, and the perspective is just this is the way I see things. It could be different because you see things differently, you know. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see what's next for us um, in schools. You know, she kind of just ran through that. But, like, what does perspective look like in schools with mm -hmm. the youth now? Um, how does that look like with us handling bullying and anti-bullying? There, there's a lot of things happening for that. But when do we get these kids to sit down and talk and learn that form of communication because if we're saying we're inundated with the internet then think mm -hmm. about our babies you mm -hmm. know um and we grew up without the internet and look at how inundated we are so i love i'd love to see that and of course corporate Got it. Got yeah. it. i i think um another another thing that just um so i i've seen you guys get really creative with your programming uh, about the, the different topics, the different communities that you look to uh, reach into and, um, you know, uh, create these uh, conversations for. Um, have you at all ever considered uh, 
what it would look like curating those conversations between cross communities we definitely want to do that um just even putting muslims and jewish people in a room um putting young people and older people in a room that's another one that we want to do i think as we have been progressing along with our events people are have become more open to different kinds of discussions we recently just had our marijuana perspective series with the legalization and recreational marijuana. And I don't think two years ago, I personally for myself, that this would have been a conversation that I would have been willing to have openly um, in public. Like, oh, Scary <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um But now I see the potential. Like now I think, first of all, we have more experience just regulating conversations and what that could look like, right? So. One of the topics that I really want to focus on at some point this year is the sexual revolution and what that looks like with the Me Too movement, um, the new rules around dating and all that, right? Would that have been a conversation I could have facilitated two years ago or even early last year? Probably not. But I think as we have more conversations, now we have people, repeat participants who keep coming back. So they're also able to hold the space in a way that, you know, was not possible for us a year or two ago, so... Yeah, I think we're already working on that. Mm -hmm. The last major event that we regularly do is the Caribbean Perspective, and I think that in itself is a cross, um, a cross cultural conversation, mm -hmm. uh, because that admittedly was one of our smaller events, but one of our more impactful events last year, because we had about twelve, fifteen people, mm -hmm. and within that we had about eight countries represented. You know? Wow. Um, between the Caribbean islands. So when you say the Caribbean perspective, you're automatically inviting several different people who are, you know, they bleed Caribbean, mm -hmm. you know, even if they're from St. Kitts or Jamaica or Haiti or Guyana, you know, and what does that conversation look like? That that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And both uh, Nussie and I, we're not of those, we're not mm -hmm. of those cultures, but yeah. we get to sit back and see how that looks for people who've been here for years, been neighbors with Guyanese and Trinidad and have never just sat down and like, hey, what's your experience mm -hmm. coming here? Mm -hmm. Mine's has been this. What's yeah. yours? And also, what's I think people are often mistaken that if we're going to have a Caribbean perspective, you have to be Caribbean to have a perspective. One of the most notable and, you know, he had the most to say was an African man who was married to a Guyanese woman, right? right. And what his perspective was being a man from Nigeria married to someone from the caribbean and right. what that looked like for him right so you know even his wife learned something new that like oh like that's what you've been thinking like that's what was you know on your mind like in this right so yeah we also we often say that like everyone's perspective matters mm -hmm. right so uh, if you're married to a caribbean person then you have a perspective on caribbean people if you're neighbors with one if you went to school if you the, your bus driver is Jamaican, like, you have a perspective about it, and that goes for pretty much anything that we talk about. Yeah. Do you have any other questions for us, Leo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, uh, it's been, it's been, it's been great, it's been great uh, this, this year plus that I've been traveling with you guys. Uh, yeah. I'm excited to see you continue to grow, I think. Um, the thing that I'm reminded of inside of what you do is your and I think also it's an opportunity that I get to take to you know maybe uh, continue to call you to action around mm -hmm. um, having these conversations I think the topics are important but the people that we get into the room are even more important mm -hmm. um, that's the reason why I asked about you know cross community conversation because a lot of the change that we're going through is generational Nice. Um, you know, the, the individual topics, of course, impact us directly, uh, but a lot of it is, uh, you know, is, 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 is kind of um, built into the foundation is, you know, generational, it's indoctrinated, it's in many cases, a lot of us just haven't addressed it. Mm. It's, it's, it's um, old ways of thinking and old systems that should have been torn down mm -hmm. that for whatever reason we haven't done as of yet. Yeah. And, um, you can't begin to t tear things down unless you conceptually tear things down. And when people get together to see where things are working and when things are not working, 
um, and how that affects community, um, we, we, we stand to, you know, do better work all, all together. So, you know, yeah, I think you guys have done a great job of uh, putting this together and I'm excited to continue to support you as you guys move forward. Um, I'm excited yes, for 2020. Sure. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much, man. I appreciate your, your great questions. Yeah, thank funny. you for having me. Thank you for having me. It's, it's an honor. And then, very much likewise with all the energy that you have going into the new year, um, you just you 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 mentioned, excuse me, you mentioned about the the work that you're doing, um, and I just kind of wanted to double down on that because in our work as well. Specifically, when we done men versus women, and, and we would do stuff like that because people love to come out to the idea of a man and a woman conversation, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what that gentleman had a little bit in him of preset thinking of I'm gonna come here and do a certain way. But a lot of those conversations, uh, we do have a lot of men that come out to our, our, our events, regardless, you know. Mm -hmm. what, what I've learned is that. Outside of the stereotype that they try to teach me, a lot of men want to talk. A lot of men want to express themselves. Um, a lot of men are out here looking to learn more about themselves, especially from someone who's going on a journey. So, you know, thank you very much for doing that work <laughs> thank and, you. and thank holding you. the space for the, for the masculine energy. Yeah. So with that being said, we do want to move on to our current events, right? There are many things currently happening in this world too many to speak about on this one show tonight mm -hmm. but what is one something that is currently pressing to you right now that you think needs to be brought attention to what topic is mostly affecting you right now yeah so um thank you for the question i, I think um it's it's a big topic um because you know we're, we're going to be living under the umbrella of it for uh, quite some time right now um, but um, I think it also speaks a lot to the work that I'm doing and it's um, this idea of non-ending aggression mm -hmm. we have a culture of non-ending aggression um, and so you're seeing it play out on the world stage and you know in political arenas uh, you know we have a president who um, is not just increasingly becoming aggressive with uh, you know, people outside of our borders, but mm -hmm. is also increasingly becoming aggressive with segments of our own population. And um, you know, when when I when I look at this gentleman, um, even from the perspective of just doing the masculinity work, just from a psychoanalytical place, mm -hmm. right? Uh, from a launching point, um, I can see so much projection of you know privilege rooted inside of. Um, uh, 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 an old patriarchal masculinity mm -hmm. that never was allowed to mature emotionally mm -hmm. and is literally imposing its, itself on the world. Mm -hmm. And you, we see it in a lot of different arenas. This is not just something that's political. It's not something that just belongs to one class. Right. I, was, I was just going to jump in and ask, do you think that, or even from what you're saying now, do you think that is a... A universal thing or is that a Donald Trump thing specifically I, I, I think there's a truth be told the reason I, we're going through a collective rite of passage um, for a long time we've been making do with um, old ways of thinking mm -hmm. and also we've been we've been limping along with old ways of thinking but then also being crushed by the fact that we're outpacing our own technology and we've been outpacing our own technology for a long time well over a century right. um, we're just just as Americans as um, people on this planet we're just starting to really like come to grips with the impact of the industrial revolution and everything that it created and it spawned and yes it, it had a lot of great things that it created for humanity but somewhere along the line we didn't get off we didn't we didn't take the exit on the off ramp mm -hmm. and we've we've been we've been going down the same path for the last 50 years mm -hmm. and this is just at a policy level but all of it is actually rooted in an old way of thinking 
um, that's been compacted and, and compounded. And we can get into the same conversations that everybody gets into, which is whether it's religion or whether it's uh, nation state. But if we were really to get at the root core of what we are as a humanity, the reason why I love to do this work is because we're, we're, the, we're, the, we're the fly stuck in the ointment. And it's very difficult for us to actually see when there's a huge shift and turnover in just one area of human common experience. Can you imagine when it's happening on such a large scale? Because right now everything is changing everywhere. Like everywhere, everything is changing. And so we're going from mechanical man to metaphysical man right before our very own eyes. And we have, you know, the president tweets but he has no technology on his table mm. and so you know we were talking about young folks and technology and you know this this big shift in terms of like their work ethic um but to be told like a lot of us and it's just i think it, it's representative of who we are we're overburdened with so much information yes. that we don't know what the basics are that are necessary for our very existence yeah. And so we ask these young folks to be a thing that we ourselves are not living up to. And that conversation is coming back big time. And I think it's an opportunity to like really, who are we? Where did we come from? Where are we going? Um, and there's, I think there's traditional wisdom in all of the people's inhabitants um, that we get to check in with to see what is the most a resourceful, responsible way to care for ourselves and the planet that we can carry forward. See, that's the kind of answer I needed for this that, kind that, of mayhem that, going that, on. That we can then rebalance with the technology that's available right. and the desire that we have amongst human resource capital. We have a lot of human beings. I mean, like, we have a lot of people on the ground, like yourselves, who are looking to make impact, even if it's just from one person to the next, it's these old systems of thinking. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is rooted inside of um, these roles that we, these masks, and it's the reason why I call my program Mask Off, it's because we as human beings had inside of the fact that we're storytellers, we've had to give ourselves masks to live up to. The father, the mother, the general, the president, and we've just become even more complicated to the point that we're possessed by the the, the overcomplication of what we've created. That, like, at the end of the day, I don't see you as you know. It's interesting. We actually did that that um, that masculinity of it. You asked from jump. What was the question that you asked about what? How do you define masculinity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not a single person brought up the word man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So think about the fact that we as men have been tools. But we're forgotten tools. Right, yeah. So what would have been possible, right, for the work that you're looking to do if Donald Trump would have had the opportunity to be in a space like that, to be in a vulnerable space around other men? Like, what's the possibility? Hmm. Um. That's it. That's a that's a that's a really heavily loaded question um, because I th I think some 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 angry bulls you can't corral okay and so I I and I, I don't believe that you can deliver the work to people who are not ready to receive Let's it see. and so um, and not not that I don't want to put loving vibes mm -hmm. and um, send light and love to an individual who I perceive to be filled with some level of darkness or anxiety. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, but at the end of the day, I don't, I, there's not a world in which I can conceive him being in the room of that, yeah. you know, nature. I, I, I totally feel uh, what you just said earlier as far as rites of passage mm -hmm. and that this guy is, he was a necessary amalgamation of cr what we created mm -hmm. eons ago. There's no sitting a Donald Trump down in, in these kinds of settings. And there's so many other Donald Trumps out there, you know, yeah. who we even understand for our work. We're not going to be able to get everybody to sit down and have a comfortable, open conversation. So in my work, in my work, I talk about how, you know, and I just mentioned it a little bit. But these 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 masks, when we put them on, um, 
and for and for the man it's the king the warrior the magician and the, and the lover archetypes these are the masks that men wear they're fundamental to each and every single one of us it's embedded in our dna um that when we take on these masks we possess its power mm -hmm. um but if we become blind and we get lost behind the mask eventually the mask possesses us mm -hmm. and what we're seeing on on a on a global scale um and even at a microcosm, even inside of some of our own communities, with you know the 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 desire to have conversation about change, where some people don't even want to begin to entertain the possibilities, right, right. Um, is that this particular mask, this hyper aggressive, hyper masculine, um, very um, um, entrenched patriarchal way of seeing the world that unfortunately is 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 fascist in nature it's it has nothing to do with race or class but it's just um i believe fascism to be uh, the, the, the kind of ghoul that that lives inside of people who just like to see other people suffer yeah. and figure out like where what groups of people they can you know, align themselves with to protect themselves and hoard the power so that they don't have to suffer the consequences of the karma of what mm. they create. Um, but, yeah, but ultimately, you know, these are the directions that, that, that we're going in in terms of, like, really having to take a step back and reevaluate what it is that, you know, we belong to. And I, I personally believe it, it, it kind of starts with looking at these masks that we've inherited um, you know, to a certain extent, these men have become um, the spirit of a, 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 almost like a voodoo doll that we've created out of war, yeah. right? Like right. we, you know, we the, the, the hyper aggression that lives inside of Western dominant man mm -hmm. is the kind of hyper aggression that lives inside of our culture where we blindly cheer things that we know are destructive um, and we do it even inside of our own relationships and it's becoming a very big burden on people and you so see how one topic can always turn into so many more different topics <laughs> so many it, that's because they're all tied happens, in right? yeah. all it all always happens like we want to go so much deeper sometimes like we can go and s go on forever because I'm clear that this conversation is not over tonight but because we are but that was a wonderful yeah. look, even mm -hmm. in, I love how we're doing uh, current events, we're mm -hmm. having our hosts just jump in there, and we could throw and say, hey, this is what we want to talk about, but in the spirit of our show, like, yeah. what is your perspective in your life of what is, is something to talk yeah. about, so I appreciate you, I appreciate you being here, we appreciate you yeah. being Thank here. Thank you for having me, it's, a, it's an honor to be on, uh, you know, one of your very first yes. episodes. And can you yeah. tell us how we can you um, follow you and your next event is? Uh, yeah, so, you know, for anybody who's interested, um, you can follow me on Instagram at UTC Live, or UTC underscore live, and also um, you can hit me up or send me an email at paradigmshifts at gmail.com, and that's para with uh, two R's, P-A-R-R-A, -R -R -A, dime shifts. Right, right. And your next event is? Uh, yeah, so my next event is coming up on Tuesday. It's going to be from 7 to 9. Um, you know, I'll, I'll uh, give you guys the information in terms of the location. Uh, it's going to be in Midtown at uh, 43rd Street between 9th and 10th Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, Everybody is uh, welcome to come. It's uh, primarily for men. This week we're going to be discussing the warrior's mask, okay. um, the past and the mask that men wear uh, when they take on the warrior role. Yes. Uh, thank you again. Leo is a special, special brother. Uh, for the men hearing this, get in touch with them if you need to find that space. Or the women, and you know there's a guy out there that needs that space, please contact this brother and get, get in contact. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, 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 then what do we have coming up then? There you go. <laughs> there you go. You didn't, you didn't get your own plug in. Man, listen, we, we've been doing so many things. Website, we do, we've been doing the radio. We've got events. We just finished the holiday event. We've got events coming up at the end of this month, February, March, and April. Yeah. Uh, the very ne next event that we have is January 29th. That will be at Civic Hall, and that is the Identity and belong Belonging panel mm -hmm. event at Civic Hall. I really love the panel events that we do because it's kind of not like your typical panel of just coming here and hearing somebody. Mm -hmm. We always do our I am we, our IAP thing. We, we fit that in. So just imagine coming to an interactive panel. You 
on hearing hearing these amazing people and then being able to share your experience. The IAP thing that he speaks of, is our specialty is one-on-one -on -one dialogues. So we believe that everyone that comes in through the doors has a perspective to share. So whether we're doing a panel, whether we're having a performance, um, everyone at some point will have the opportunity to share sitting across from someone else as well. Um, we also have January 30th, for the first time, our hip hop perspective. And that's a special event that we're hosting with Lit Karaoke at Drip BK. Um, we'll be talking about, about the history everybody. of uh, hip hop. BK. Yes, Drip BK. Um, the history of hip hop, and then really also having the opportunity. It could be fun, right? Like, we can actually take the time to enjoy the stuff that we're learning about. And on February 6th at Drip BK as well, we're doing the Haitian Perspective, which is uh, in addition to the Caribbean Perspective series, as we talked about just a moment ago, of what uh, cross-cultural conversations look like. That, again, we have to keep reminding people of, of that is the Haitian Perspective, but this is open to everyone, Colombians, black people, hey, <laughs> Bengali. Good to know, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we really do, because people want to, they want to come out to some events and they think that they're, uh, they're not allowed. And mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's one thing to, to invite everyone, but that's the subtext of what we're saying is everyone has perspective. Come out to this event, learn something about the Haitian culture, about what your Haitian brethren and sisters are going through. And that's the case for any event that we do. Yes. And then we actually have a few more events coming up in February. Um, dates to be announced. One will be, re we'll be bringing back Love in Perspective. That was a very top popular topic that we had going on last year and we will also be releasing our love and perspective deck full of questions um basically what we he do here at i am perspective is meant to invoke all sorts of conversations around different aspects of love and dating and sexuality we are also going to be beginning our crime and punishment series in february and specifically the role that it has had in the black men and black population. Hey, there's, a, there's a lot to do. Mm -hmm. We're doing it all. <laughs> it sounds like we're just rattling things. <laughs> like, 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 like we, we're doing confused. all of this, you know. And we, we understand, even if she says the, or, or we're saying the crime and punishment series, mm -hmm. what we've learned a lot from the work that we do that, like these conversations have to happen in succession. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that we're going to be able to tackle in one conversation right. about our crime and punishment system. This is something we have to break down from many different angles. And mm -hmm. so, that's what a lot of these events are when you hear series events and us doing multiple events. Yeah. We have a few conferences coming up as well. We'll be doing an all-day women's conference yeah. and an all-day men's conference yeah. as well yeah. where we get to tackle different issues, <laughs> right? Um, so so uh, we'll, we'll have the all-women, that'll be in March, March, which is Women's Month, and, and in April we're going to do the men's, which... Leo's looking at me and knows like that he's gonna, see him, Leo right? knows he's about to be a part of, you know, and uh, yeah, man, look, what, what does that look like? An all men's day, you know, have a little men's spa mm -hmm. session. We'll have different uh, conversations had throughout the night, yeah. uh, throughout the day. You know, same thing for the women, uh, especially, if, of course, during Women's Month, there's mm -hmm. been so many, so much more women's activity happening, women's groups coming together, and it's mm -hmm. time for the men to do it as well. And the other thing to note is we are not looking to host these events and do everything on our own. So if any of these topics interest you in any sort of way, please reach out to us. You can follow us on Instagram, which is at IAP.radio, or our main Instagram page, which is at I.mperspective. And you can always sign up for our newsletter on our website, www.imperspective.com. Yeah, I think that's all. Mm. This is all we got. Yeah. Can we start talking about anything else? This is like some pros. <laughs> like you've been doing it forever. <laughs> thank you again for everyone joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you to our special guest again. Thank you again, thank you guys. Our co host. Thank you to me. Next up on WEMS Radio, we have Speak Into Existence with May I Speak. So make sure you tune in for that. Thank you to WMS Radio for having us. Iron Perspective 2020 and beyond. We are out of here. Peace. I'm dope. I'm dope. That's great, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>